Welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Fat Cat, and I am here with the beautiful and the illustrious and the very sexy oh. Razor Blade. Hi. <laughs> we are D and B, and yeah. we are here to jump into the Sister Wives dumpster. Honey. Yes, girl. We've got some things to talk about. Of course, yep. the episode aired on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I've watched it. 100 times. Me too. <laughs> I've watched reactions of it. Oh my God, you're committed. I've done a forensic examination. And into you took this notes. Episode. I took so many notes. God. The thing about it though, is that it was so many conversations. I know. And there were a lot of cool things that were said. Yeah. But I mean, it was just like, okay, nobody went anywhere. No, nobody, nobody did anything. Did, well, Cody did take those mini bikes out for a spin on Coyote Pass. Ugh. Honey. But like nothing really happened other than conversations where people continued to lie Mm -hmm. somewhat. And then other people started to tell the truth a little bit. A little bit. And we as raccoons in a dumpster, we love the trash. Yes. We want all of the trash, all of the truth, all of the information. So thank you very much. Bingo. Now, before we get into today's episode, we have to remind you, this is the dumpster for a reason. We make trouble over here. Yeah. We're just sifting through the trash, trying to spin it into gold. We are nocturnal night creatures of the dark, (laughs) baby. And so if you're sensitive, if you're looking for a podcast with like an intellectual and maybe spiritual take on the system, this is not it. No. We say bad words. Yeah. Hide your wife and hide your kids. If you're sensitive. Find another dumpster, baby. Get out of here. Come on now. Also, we have an Instagram at Reality TV Cringe. We're almost at 3,000 <gasps> followers. Oh We're famous. Also, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. There's lots of bonus trash up lots. on there. Oh my God, so much. So much. We also have a YouTube, whether you're uh-huh. listening or maybe you're watching on the Patreon, but we have a YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, yeah. thank you for being here. Bingo. Please do us a favor and like the video comment it helps us in the algorithm and share subscribe. most definitely subscribe join the raccoon party we would love yes. to have you Thank you. all right let's, let's get, get into, into sister wives season 18 episode 7 entitled throwing in the towel and thank god Thank Jesus on Kolob in his Mormon <laughs> celestial universe that Mary Brown looks like she's going to be throwing in the towel. Please, finally. Come on now. It's like the Judge Judy meme that's like the yeah. TikTok. Hello. Finally. Oh, my God. We've been waiting 18 freaking seasons for you to do this, Mary. <laughs> you should have left way back when. Well, the thing is, is that her identity, her total yeah. identity is wrapped up in this polygamist family unfortunately when you think about it she was indoctrinated from a a very young Mm -hmm. age she was 19 years old when she married cody brown she thought she wanted to be a polygamist and Mm -hmm. then he started onboarding new wives and she found herself getting jealous but like she was still trying to do what she thought she had to do she was the one who brought in robin yeah but in that first season when she brings in robin she also wanted to fucking leave cody i know she's never been happy no and she's always been dutiful except for the catfishing part yeah but but it's because he wasn't licking her box. Well, yeah. He's been <laughs> neglecting her by then in yeah. Vegas. He wasn't taking care of the relationship. He didn't want anything to do with her. And so, yeah, she fell victim to the catfish. But I have a lot of compassion for Mary. Me too. And so in these scenes and in these conversations, I really feel for her. And I also think that she's in the era of starting to drop some truth bombs. Of worthying up. Of worthying up and <laughs> talking on the couch and dropping some peppering, little sprinkling nuggets. and little nuggets of information. Like Robin never called me during the pandemic, bitch. That was big. Two years I was alone in this very sterile, very clean Flagstaff home. McMansion. Nobody visited me. Nobody. Robin, who's supposed to be feeling steady around me, my best friend, never texted, never called. Like, ooh, okay, thank you. That we thought big. so. big, yeah. We thought so. We knew it. But now we know so. Yeah. So what are some of your major takeaways from this episode, just off the top of your head? Well, initially when I watched this episode, you know, for the first time, I watched this three times today. Um, initially, I was trying to see if maybe there was some truth to what Robin was spouting. Like maybe she was actually confused. Maybe she is a dumb bitch and she has Come on. believed Cody's lies this whole entire time. But then, you know, as I keep going on in these ep- these watchings, I'm just like, okay, 
Robin's a narc. Yes. Cody's a narc. Mary is sad and pathetic. And I just want the best for her. Like, I, I mean that, like, it's pathetic to watch her pine over not only Cody, but Robin's friendship when Robin hates her. Robin does not mm-hmm. like her. Mm-hmm. It's just so obvious. And then Janelle kind of coming out of her shell, shell a little bit, kind of questioning her faith, questioning her marriage a little bit. Not necessarily her faith, but yeah. like, you know, questioning the tenet of her faith of like, do I need to stay married to this douche nozzle mm-hmm. this entire time or can I just bounce? Right. Can I pick something new for yeah. myself? Is it a new season that I'm entering into? Can I do that? Yeah. So those are my major takeaways. What about you? Well, I really love that we're seeing the partnership of Janelle and Christine. Yeah. I really love how they're committed to being sister wives together. I think it makes all the difference in the world when you are leaving someone or divorcing, which I've done a million times. <laughs> If you know you have a support system yeah. or if you've got someone there who's going to help you get settled or who's just not going to judge you for making the decisions that you're making. So I think that's really, really beautiful. I also thought that um, Robin in the conversation with Mary came off so cold, mm, yeah, so stiff, so awkward, like socially awkward, like she didn't know how to act like a human being friend Yeah, in that conversation. Like she was trying to approximate what a friend might do, but she has no idea. And that's either because she genuinely doesn't give a fuck about Mary or she's a robot. Mm. Or she's just trying to figure out how to lie in the moment because she doesn't have a script for this conversation that she has with Mary. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. Do you think that they actually talked about this conversation before they filmed it? Because it seems to me that the Browns have always kind of orchestrated Mm -hmm. and produced their different scenes and segments. So do you think that Robin walked into this conversation with Mary knowing what it was going to be about? I don't know. It didn't seem like that to me when I watched it. Like, but it seemed weird. Like it seemed like Robin came in there with, things that she was going to say already or like answers to some of the questions. But Robin, when she sits down with Mary already knows that it's going to be bad news. Right. Because she of says. the way that Mary is acting. Yeah. And let's talk about that for a moment. Like yeah. the way that Mary is acting. She was nervous. She yeah. was breathing like rapidly, heavily, but I felt personally like that was a fear response. Totally. Like she was almost afraid of the conversation or afraid of Robin. And my first feeling about that was, oh, how the mighty have fallen because Mm. Mary was the first wife. Mary was the legal wife. Mary had the position and the power historically in the home up until, I don't know, 2015 or whatever it was when she divorced Cody for Robin. Mm Mm-hmm how that must feel to feel disempowered sitting next to the fourth wife who stole your man, yep. wrecked your whole family structure, yep. and now you've got to tell her that you're going to do something that she's not going to like. And I think Mary inherently questions whether Robin actually likes her. Mm. Like, does Robin really like me, though? She doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> does Robin actually love me and really want me to be here i think mary has been asking herself these questions because of course and again robin didn't call her during the lockdown right cody wasn't gonna call her right robin didn't visit how easy would that have been to just drop by drop some food by right send a text once a week or whatever Mm -hmm. so mary's coming into the consciousness that this has all been a bunch of bullshit yeah but she's also a little bit afraid of robin because robin has the power robin has the access to cody Mm. robin has the access to her own children which i think mary now has a relationship with and so she feels that she has a lot to lose and i'm like let it go let it go let it drop away from your baby not that much to lose to be honest i'm just like you are afraid of losing a friendship with such a shitty person who like literally does not care about you doesn't reach out doesn't talk to you pretends like you're her best friend says that she feels steady and safe with you but doesn't care about your happiness and doesn't advocate for you to leave like she wants you to stay because of her own selfish reasons and because she feels safe with you or i guess Feel safe with her money. Right. But she <laughs> I feel very safe with all of your money. Thank you. Uh, thank you. But like she doesn't advocate for Mary to just find something better. But I don't know. We'll get to it later but in the bitch, episode. If you with came that. over to my house and well, you were like yeah. upset 
and you were going to make a new choice for your life, if you were going to leave somebody because the relationship wasn't working out for you, if you were scared about life, I would give you a hug. I'd be like, bitch, let's get some wine. Let's get some food. Let's get a taco. Let's sit down and talk about it. I am here for you. Like there would be an innate warmth between us because we're, we're actual friends we're real and friends, I care yeah. about you. You see none of that mm-hmm. with Robin. You don't see it with Mary either. Although I feel like if Robin had given her a little bit of warmth that Mary would have kind of warmed up to her Opened as well. Like I yeah. think Mary probably wishes that Robin would, but Robin gives her absolutely nothing. Just, just stone faced girl. I just don't get like what Mary is holding on to with Robin because it doesn't seem to me like they've had a really good, genuine relationship this entire time. Like I know in the earlier seasons, Mary says that she's never had a relationship with another sister wife like she's had with Robin. Like she always throws that in the other wives' face and I don't see it. I don't get it. Like what does Robin bring to the table for Mary or what did Robin bring to the a table womb? for Mary? She wanted to be her surrogate. I but guess. that was always just Robin sidling up to the bitch in power. Of course. She wanted to align herself with the woman who had the most power so mm-hmm. that she could be safe in the family to grift and to bring her bills and ask, where do I put these? Do I put them on the counter? I never have to get a job. I am safe if I'm aligned with Mary. And Mary mm-hmm. probably had the expectation when the roles reversed and Robin became the legal wife that she'd be safe with her. Uh, but what did Robin do? Cast her aside. Yep. Cast just her like Cody. Aside. Cast her aside. Ooh, it is such a sad and terrible thing. Totally. And I feel for Mary. I feel Me for too. Janelle and Christine as well because I come out of like a deeply indoctrinated religious experience. Mm-hmm. Like I was in deep, honey. You used to be I was, a fundy. I was in super deep. And when you leave the structure of that, it is incredibly frightening. Like you're leaving everything you know. Right. And I left when I was in my mid twenties, mid twenties. So imagine Mary being in her fifties. She's been living this her whole life. She's been believing it. She's been trying to be faithful. She's been putting up with a dead bedroom right. and a dead marriage all for her faith and hoping Cody would come back around. Right. I I can't even imagine Mm -mm. how it would be to be in my 50s and having to walk away from my whole identity. And this is why I want Mary to live her best life. I want Mary to get herself out there, find her a man or a woman. Same with Janelle. Like, let this go and be happy. Please. Which Robin doesn't want you to do because she wants to dangle that rope and dangle that carrot and keep you hanging on, baby. Well, but Robin cried later in the episode and said, I'm just torn and I just feel like I want to tell Mary she should be happy and go off and live her life. But I also want her to be here with me. Yeah. She and wants that for her, though. I kind of believed her there. Really? Yeah. I feel like mm-hmm. she's definitely a goblin and she's definitely got her (laughs) ulterior motives she's not a good person generally speaking but I think she can feel that Mary needs permission to go and be happy and to have a different life I think she can feel that and she wants to give it but she doesn't in the moment when they're sitting there she doesn't do it she reels her she tries to reel her back in when Mm. Mary is saying point blank come on now this man don't want me this man's pretending to lament his whole family, but he's not doing any of the work. I don't believe any of it. He has nothing for me. And in that moment, if Robin was a friend, she'd be like, I see that. I understand that. No. And what can I do to help you to be happy, to get what you need? And instead, Robin just says, no, but he he says, Mm -hmm. he talks about you all the time. And he says he envisions us all on Coyote Pass and he wants you there. Right. And so that's why do you the say cruelty. That? That's the cruelty. So because terrible. even though she might have the inclination to toss Mary a bone and to help her out, she is going to defer to her prime directive, which is money and security. Yeah. And Mary can give some of that. And also the allyship to not appear to be alone or to appear to have failed. Because I mm. think honor and embarrassment and shame plays a lot on the psyche of Cody and Robin and for all of his wives to leave is deeply embarrassing for him and it has spiritual implications I think it affects the kind of planet he gets (laughs) honestly I don't think you get a planet unless you have three wives Ethel out there or any Mormon or LDS or FLDS that knows about this but I think 
it hinges on the number of wives that you have. And I also think it is a disgrace if your wives leave you or if you get divorced. And so I think there's shame involved in it. And I think Robin is embarrassed that this whole thing is falling apart. And she's trying. She's fucking tap dancing as fast as she can. Break dancing. To to deflect any responsibility away from herself. Well, I mean, it's totally embarrassing and it is totally disappointing and they should feel shame for how they've acted and how this has all turned out because this is a spectacle. This is why this yeah. season and last season have the most views in Sister Wives history and that's why mm-hmm. everybody's watching this destruction. It's glorious to watch. It's fabulous. But like... But it's got to sh- suck to oh, feel. Oh, for <laughs> sure. But like, do you think that Cody actually feels that religious shame? Like if he has touted that he's not really a polygamist anymore and that he's questioning his faith. Well, you can still be a Mormon and not a polygamist. But when they cut in with Christine saying, I am not responsible for Cody losing his faith. Yeah. It seems like a non sequitur to me because at no point were they talking about faith. And so I'm wondering if Cody is, is, has been saying that he doesn't know if he believes the same thing because of Christine, because of Christine. And we just haven't seen it. And she was addressing that, but it wasn't edited in yeah i thought that was weird that they put that in there i'm like this has no context to what has been talking about but whatever but if we believe the rumors for example about leon and how Mm -hmm. cody Mm -hmm. and robin have estranged themselves from leon because they fundamentally disagree with leon's transition Mm -hmm. and they are trying to align themselves back with the aub then that would indicate obviously that they're still religiously motivated but like nothing Mm -hmm. about the way Cody's behaving is spiritual to me. No. Because the essence of any spirituality or religion is love. Right. And compassion and forgiveness and kindness. Like, yeah. There's none of that here. Mm-mm, not at all. None of it. It's all delusion. <laughs> Delulu. Narcissism. And also cruel. Yeah. And also mean and self-serving. Yes. That's who these people are. Okay, so let's get into it. <laughs> We've talked about a bunch of it, but let's just kind of cover some of the scenes. So yeah. we start with, I think, Christine meeting up with Janelle at the Salsa Brava production so, studio. I guess TLC is renting this shit out for the whole season. Is every know. conversation going to be at Salsa fucking Brava? I don't know. Why? Are they too famous now to go to Fat Olives? I think actually Salsa Brava is owned by the same restaurateur who owns Fat Olives. Oh, I was really? reading on Reddit. Yeah, so I don't <laughs> even know what's going on. Wow. But they meet up there and they kind of get right into Janelle's situation. Janelle tells Christine like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, we're separated. I don't want to use the word divorce because like, I don't know how I feel about that spiritually. <laughs> I don't know about the implications for me, whether I get to go to a planet or not, because I think she's actually worried and Mary is too, that they're going to be disenfranchised in the world of spirit upon their death, which but is they're really gonna be fucking floating terrible. on some asteroid and yeah. space. Yeah. And nowhere in near God. Purgatory slash hell <laughs> with no man to save you in the patriarchal religion. Right. Jesus. So she gets right into it. And Christine... Is trying not to smile. Oh, she is but so eager for excited. this conversation, too. She's like, she's excited, girl. I've been waiting for you, Janelle, to just leave. Uh, yeah, I think, is this when Janelle mentions that she reached out to Nancy, their former therapist? Yes. Yeah, she's been talking to Nancy. Oh, to be a fly mm. on that wall or I'd Zoom call, babe. I'd love to hear that. I'm just wondering what Nancy really thinks about all of these right. dysfunctional Browns. She's been in numerous therapy sessions she went with christine and cody down to galveston to try to save their marriage and yeah. all he could do is talk about robin right and so she's she's been there and she's seen behind the curtains so i'm wondering like what she's telling janelle because janelle's walking away from that conversation with clarity right but i've been reading on the reddits that people are mad that janelle's going to see nancy because i guess a lot of people think nancy was a bad therapist and like didn't give good advice and wasn't really good to any of the wives during their family counseling sessions or anything like that. So I don't know, but I haven't seen any. Of I haven't really seasons. seen that either. I think yeah. I picked up with the series around Galveston, but I didn't stay with it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But like, there's only so much you can do with a narcissist. Right. And if you've got two narcissists, i.e. Robin and Cody, yeah. like you can't therapize those people. Is that mm-hmm. a word? You cannot administer therapeutics on folks like that because they will not receive it. Right. And they 
are not going to change. Yeah, most likely. And so I'm just wondering what Nancy had to say to Janelle. I'm hoping she's like, I've been waiting for this call, bitch. Leave this mofo. I have been waiting to hear from one of you <laughs> for so long. I fully support what you're doing. I think it is the right thing for you to do. Whatever Nancy said, Janelle walked away and she was clear. Yes. I'm done. I don't want it anymore. I mean, I'm glad for that queen shit right there. That's right. Then we bop on over to Mary's big fucking house. Sad. I'm sorry. I would be scared to live alone in a house that I big. I know, right? Too much fucking space. I mean, it's so open yeah. and you'd hear things Ugh. and, mm. oh my God, is it haunted? And she's Probably. all alone and nobody's visiting her during COVID. So sad. I'm sad about it, but she has her little doggy. Yeah, I guess. Or she did. I think the doggy has since passed. God, she's so lonely, man. I'm sad about it. But here comes Robin rolling up in Cody's truck. And do you mm-hmm. know what the interesting thing about that is? What? Last season, when Janelle went to get her fifth wheel, she needed to get a truck and she wanted to drive Cody's truck. But he said to Janelle, no, you right. cannot drive my truck because I don't think you can handle it, little lady. <laughs> I'm sorry, little lady. I don't think you can handle this big rig over here, okay? Yeah, it's only for big dick guys. And so he said no. And then in this scene, we have Robin rolling up in one of his trucks. I don't think it's the same truck, but in another truck. I'm just like, oh my God, the favorite truck. It's everywhere in every facet of this fucking life. So Robin gets in and they promptly begin to talk about Mary's plans. And here again, Mary's super fucking nervous, frightened almost because she's going to have to kiss the ring of the one true queen. It's cringe to see. She's going to have to disappoint the one true queen (laughs) and she's worried about her reaction. And so she kind of launches right into it. Yeah, and she just straight up says, I've been scared to tell you. And Robin's like, I knew that this was coming. I knew bad news was coming, whatever. But Mary just gets into it and says, I'm moving to Parowan. I'm moving my clothing business. I'm moving all my shit up there. I'm downsizing down here, but I'm still going to be here. I'm not leaving the family. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear. I'm not leaving. I'm not abandoning you, Robin. I'm going to be here, just not as often. (laughs) In this episode, I started to come around to your way of thinking. Yeah. Your way of thinking, which is actually this is the first step for the complete moving away from Cody and Robin. I'm telling you. That's why she's so nervous, because if it really was, okay, I'm going to spend not 50%, but 75% of my time there, but it's going to be the same arrangement, essentially. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Right. But because... Mary knows what she's really doing is leaving the family. She's worried about Ro- what Robin is going to think and feel yep. about that. And Robin catches on right away. Robin, oh, totally. walking into the situation, must be able to perceive how nervous and even afraid Mary is. And instead of comforting her like a friend would, mm-hmm. instead of saying, hey, girl, where's the wine? Although yep. they're Mormon, they don't drink. No. Nope. Although I think more, I think Mary <laughs> drinks, by the way. You think so? Uh, you think yeah. she's drinking alone, like those box wine things? The Yes, I think the <laughs> LuLaRoe lives she does on Instagram and she's on drinking? Facebook. A lot of people say she's fucking lit drinking. Oh. Yes. So, but if I were Robin and if I saw how anxious she was, I'd be like, what can I do, bitch? What's going on? Yeah. Talk to me. How can I help? But Robin with her stony ass face and, and her harsh frown. brows sits down on that couch and says to the camera with her mouth, <laughs> so crazy, <laughs> dude. Know. And she like frowns so hard. I don't it's know how you do that. Weird. Oh, that's so weird. On the couch, she says, I can tell Mary doesn't have anything good to tell me. And in one statement, she makes it all about herself. Of course. It's not like, what's going on? How can I help? You look this sad. is my friend. It's been a while since we've talked. Right. Instead, it's like, oh, how does this affect and impact me? Yeah, of course. Because everything Robin does, everything that's said about Robin, every interaction with Robin, she takes everything personally. Everything is all about her and how other people make her feel. Like, it's never how she comes off. Mm-mm. It's always the damsel in distress routine. Yeah, it's it's enraging yeah it's actually infuriating yeah to watch you know and mary's proceeding to talk about her plans and why she's doing it and all robin really seems to worry about whether this is temporary or whether it's permanent right and we've got mary kind of talking about how 
she doesn't really want to have to do this because she feels like moving away, moving her business away, spending more time away is kind of taking the easy way out. Yeah. And then she says, which is what Cody has done. Mm-hmm. In specific, this is what Cody has done in our relationship and in Christine's relationship and in Janelle's relationship. He has taken the easy way out and now look at all these marriages. And I wanted to ask you, how do you think Mary thinks Cody took the easy way out? Mm, probably by just taking a back seat and like not making any effort with any of the OG wives and their relationships. Like Cody says he makes effort. It's not effort. It's the one time he makes a grand gesture for each of the wives. Like for Christine in Las Vegas, it was spending a month at her house. And then that was it. (laughs) Right. For one month in Vegas, that's all Christine got. Just so Robin could keep a journal and then use that to prove that Cody spent time with Christine more than with her. Yeah. Exactly. And for Mary, it was probably like the trips that he would take with her to like the big grand gestures once in a blue moon to show them, yeah, no, I do love you. You remember that one time seven years ago Mm -hmm, that we took you to Mexico? It's proof proof that we have a good, healthy relationship. I wanted to do IVF with you. Yeah. And Robin would say, I would be your surrogate. That means I love you. It was all manipulation to get Mary where they wanted her to be. But Mary is upset and she's been waiting and she's been hoping, waiting and hoping and dreaming, waiting for Cody to come around and to see the value that she brings to the relationship, to see the value that she brings to the family. But he hasn't done it. And he never will. No, he never will. And she's coming to the realization of this. And then we hear Robin saying, you know, I could tell that Mary is really upset because it would take a lot for her to make a decision to leave because Mary values her commitments. Yeah, okay. Okay. Which was just a... Another dig. Another and I jab. Think Robin even said that Mary's been so loyal too. Like she uses that verbiage just to jab at the other wives because right. they're disloyal and they don't respect Cody and his authority. Yeah. I was just like, okay, Robin, every single moment you get, you are either directly or passively calling out these other women. Yep. Back at Saul Sabrava, we have the conversation with Janelle. And here again, she's talking about her faith. And on the couch, I thought it was really interesting because she said, you know, it's just not really accepted that you just up and leave your marriage. Like, I can't point to abuse. I can't point to outright neglect. And so I just kind of want to move in a different direction and live my own life. And I'm like, Janelle, 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 (laughs) honey, I can point to neglect. Yeah. What about when Cody didn't call Gabe on his birthday? I can point to neglect. What about when Cody didn't show up for eight to nine months during COVID to your house or to Christine's house? What about abuse? Just three episodes ago when he's screaming at you on the couch and pointing into the fucking camera and swearing at you. That's abusive. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? There was no abuse. Well, she says outright abuse. Right. She's very careful with the verbiage. So I'm like, do you mean there's some implied abuse there's some like around the edges neglect i just like she's saying it a little bit without she's saying the quiet part out loud or not saying the quiet i don't she's not saying what i want her to say how about that beatrice (laughs) i want her to say more and i also want her to wake the fuck up i know i get it that you don't give a shit i get it that you're independent that you prefer that he not be around but this whole time your kids have been needing their dad also this whole time your kids have been watching the example of your marriage to their dad and this is setting them up for a lifetime of problems and hitching their wagon to problematic relationships and people and you have everything to do with that janelle you can't shirk responsibility and say well there wasn't outright neglect. But Bitch. this is like such a common thing like with people in narcissistic relationships is that is that it's not physical abuse or it's not, you know, visible abuse. So they don't think that their mistreatment that they're feeling and all of this bullshit that they're experiencing is bad enough to leave. And that's where I was getting like I was kind of feeling with Janelle like it just seems like That's how she's always been this whole entire time. She's been neglected hardcore. She has been financially abused. We all know this. We've all seen this. Her kids have been begging her for years to leave Cody. So it's not like people have not been telling her to her face. She just doesn't think it's bad enough to leave because in her words, just last episode, I was okay with it for a while. And now I need something different. So something changed. I'm, I'm judging her for this. 
Well, she's changed, and they actually talk about how Cody's yeah. changed, and they've changed. Everybody's changed. Everybody's changed. But I'm hardcore judging her for putting up with this on behalf yeah. of their children for the entire time and, like, not thinking ahead. And I understand it's your faith, but if your faith is toxic, right? if your faith is uh, punitive and toward women and children, toxic. yeah. yeah. If this is what you're showing your kids, then wake up right. and do the right thing. I just don't have, I don't know, that just hit me the wrong way when she said there was no abuse or neglect, so that's why she never left. There was actually, though, oh, yeah. my friend. It was obvious. Back at Mary's house, we are having the conversation with Robin, and they're talking about how they're going to handle life once Mary starts spending more time in Utah. And Mary says, well, if something happens with the kids or if something's going down if there's an event you're gonna have to text me you know you're gonna have to actually reach out mm -hmm. and then on the camera excuse me on the couch she says i was alone during the entire pandemic robin didn't call me robin didn't text me which of course we raccoons we felt that we knew that we're sniffing the trash from a mile yeah. away honey but finally Mary said it. I loved that she outed her on that. And I've been seeing that on the Reddits. Like everybody is wondering if Mary was just like this sleeper sniper this whole entire time, like undercover, just believing Robin's bullshit just to expose her at the right moment. And everybody's talking about how Cody and Robin are getting the edit they deserve this time around, like where it's actually being shown how shitty you guys are and your lies are not adding up mm -hmm. all this shit's not adding up robin acting like she's such a good friend that she cares about mary and her feelings you don't even know her you're not even no nope. messaging her nope. you're not caring about her during covid dude and i was messaging my distant ass ho ass family <laughs> out in all these other states like i don't even talk to them i was messaging people i don't even have really good relationships with because I was genuinely worried about them during the pandemic. Like, are you alive though? Right. Like you couldn't even do that. If you have the minimalist amount of compassion and love right. for somebody, you're checking in and making sure they're okay. But Robin's an empath, right? Right. She's an empath. She feels <laughs> things so deeply. Yeah. Okay. Except she doesn't. <laughs> except she doesn't. That was just, that was really sad, but I was so glad that she said something. Mary yeah. also said that she does not believe that Cody has been sitting here for a couple of years <sighs> lamenting the destruction of his family because if he was truly lamenting, which is a form of grie grieving, kind of grieving out loud, mm -hmm. grieving in a demonstrative way, if you were truly grieving and you could fix it, you would do that. Yeah. But you're not doing anything. You're Atlas and you've shrugged, right? You set the world down. Shrugged it off. You're expecting everybody else to do the heavy lifting for you. So Mary's like, I'm not buying this anymore. You're not lamenting. You just don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. And Robin's kind of surprised when she says this. She's kind of taken back a little bit. And I, what did you think about her reaction to this when Mary was like, you know, Robin, if he actually cared, why isn't he making any effort? Like mm -hmm. specifically, why isn't he making any effort with me? And Robin starts to say something. She says that's the billion dollar question. Yeah, but she also said something like right before she started to be like, but, but, but mm -hmm. and didn't say anything because she knew she was on camera. But like, what did you think about her reaction to that? I thought she was caught off guard. I mm. feel like it's very similar to the reaction that Cody had last week with Janelle at Salsa Brava. The stuttering. When, yes, when Janelle brings up, oh, you didn't even call Savannah though. And Cody doesn't have an answer and he should have had an answer for that, but he just didn't expect her to say it on camera. Mm. And I think we're having a similar moment here that Robin is not expecting even, it's, and it's, it's so slight. It's not like Mary's pushing a lot. Right. Bitch. Right. She's really not, she's saying the bare minimum, but she is not expecting Mary to say even that. Mm. And so I feel like she's just, oh, oh, this is what we're doing taken off guard okay and this is where she kind of tips over into because again mary said you know she hasn't called me she hasn't done anything and this is where robin says well i've just been inside of myself i've been really depressed <sighs> my whole world is falling apart and people are making decisions on my behalf <laughs> that impact my family and i'm really depressed and upset about it but i'm not a victim not i a would victim. never say i'm a victim yeah. I don't even indulge that way of thinking. Could never be a victim. Get that straight. It's like, uh, just toughen up right. and man up and deal with it. That's what she says. Yeah. She's so full of I shit. I just like, wow, do you not watch 
any of these episodes. I mean, She's I get it. Up. You're not a raccoon. You're not archiving every episode <laughs> and like watching every, every single watching scene it multiple times. Watching it multiple times, like memorizing it in your raccoon brain. But like watch your episodes back. Right. Because if you just look, you can see the shit that you've said all along. You can see the way that it would be construed that you are a manipulative hag. You can see all of this <laughs> unfolding right before your eyes, but you don't. You believe your own bullshit. That's yeah. what makes you a pathological liar totally. and a narcissist. They totally they've been lying for so long that they believe they're just their own bullshit yeah they like don't even know any other reality but their own distorted one that they have concocted it's pretty bizarre to watch yeah it, it is bizarre to watch i think how many people are on the planet who live in that state of unconsciousness bitch, oh god who just believe their own shit and they're yeah. huffing their own farts <laughs> and they have no idea how they're coming off to the rest of the world like free radicals just bumping into everything and destroying it cody's a free radical dude he's yeah. destroying his whole family out of control and he takes no responsibility for any of it none at all he really him and robin both think that they're the ultimate victims in this entire yes. scenario i'm just like are you stupid? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, the answer is yes. Before I even said, yes, they are. <laughs> we also go back to Salsa Brava and have that conversation about how Cody has changed. Mm -hmm. And Christine remarks, interestingly, that he's changed so much that she could never actually be attracted to the kind of guy that Cody currently is. And this kind of gives Janelle an aha moment where she's like, yeah, actually, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Because for years and years and years, my punani tingled for Cody Ooh. Brown. We were in a renaissance in Vegas, baby. He Yay. was writing me poetry. He was tickling the hot... Fat cat. Fat cat, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the hot box and the fat cat. I was into it, but something has changed. Mm -hmm. And I was watching Red Lips, no, Red Lipstick reality TV. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how what has changed is his morals, mm. his value system, which is a thread that takes us back to the manosphere, mm. to the red pill, to Andrew Tate, to all those toxic poisonous forums that he was on over COVID and probably before, to yeah. be honest with you. Probably, yeah. And how in the last, I don't know, four to five years, he has changed his entire outlook on, li outlook on life. And now mm. women are bad. He hates women. He's shirking his responsibility. He's, an <laughs> He's a fucking incel. He's a man going his own way. He Actually, even used the term men going their own way. Mikdow. Oh, he did use he that term? He did use that term when he was talking to his dumb friends, Nate or whatever oh his name God, was. Oh my God, I didn't yeah, he catch used that. the actual term <gasps> analogy. And so I think Janelle is waking up to the reality that, oh, this guy is, is different. He's not the same. And even Mary says, he's not the same happy-go-lucky wonderful person that he used to be there's something very dark in him and what i wanted to tell you was i think you have to have a fundamental flaw of character and it's got to be a big fucking flaw mm -hmm. for you to change so much like mm. please try and catch me ever in my life turning my back on my child oh you turning never. my back on my spouse turning my back on my responsibilities to the people that i care the most for the only way you'd catch me doing that is if i didn't love them in the first place mm. and if i didn't care them in the first place i could never turn into something like that now i I mean, maybe I'm talking out of ignorance, but I can't see it ever happening. No, yeah. The fact that Cody's turning like this, becoming this black, dark hearted troll of a man means he's always kind of been that way. Mm, like deep down. Yep. That's my theory. Hmm. He's always kind of been that way. That would make sense, I guess, because it, it just seems like a dramatic change. And even Christine and Janelle talk about how he used to be bold and charismatic and courageous. And I'm just like, what do you mean by that? Because... I mean, we saw a glimpse of him in season one, maybe, before all the fame, before all the bullshit, where there was a little glimpse of him, of what he may have used to be, where he had this magical relationship and a magical family with the three OG wives, and then Robin came and fucked it all up right. with her breakdancing pussy. Right. So it's like, <laughs> there was obviously a change, and I always attributed it to Robin and her manipulation and her desire you to be you the can't top manipulate G. me into estranging myself from my family like you can't well no because you've got a big brain and you have a big heart like yeah. you you would never have that inclination ever if somebody if your husband right now who's the love of your life right mm -hmm. came and told you yeah you shouldn't talk to beatrice ever again or her wife fuck them mm -mm. fuck them hoes you'd no. be like 
fuck you. Right. Well, we'll be like, okay, we have to sit down and talk about something. Like, what the fuck is going <laughs> like, on? Absolutely. Like, well, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. So my theory is it's always been inside him. He's mm-hmm. always been this person. He's always hated his family? No, he's just always had the capacity to. I don't think he's ever committed to them as deeply as they have committed to him. He wouldn't yeah, have been true. able to be moved from his position if he loved them the way that they loved him. And mm-hmm. they depended on him, man. The way they, the way Janelle gave him her money, the way Janelle gifted the money for Robin right. to buy her house, that woman was Ugh. believing. She was believing in the dream and he never believed in it. I don't think he ever believed in it. I think he's a bad person. He lacks integrity. Mm. He's also weak and he's fucking soft. And he's yeah. living in the shadow of when his father, totally. everything he has done, up until maybe Robin, I don't know, has been to try and please his father and what his father wanted for him in his life. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the loss of Janelle in particular is very stinging to him because Wynn really loved Janelle. Wynn married Janelle's mama. That's true. And Wynn spoke so highly of Janelle. And so for Janelle to be piecing out on Cody, it hurts even more than Christine, which also really... Yes. Oh, fuck yes. Really? Because it seems like Cody is really fucking distraught over Christine. He can't stop himself from bringing her up at every moment. Even Robin brings her up at every moment. No, I 100% think the loss of Janelle is the biggest loss of all. Mm. Maybe Robin would be the biggest loss of all. I'm not sure if that would ever happen. But Janelle, for him, I mean, you're going back into the lineage, babe. You're going back into the ancestral energy. I feel like he loves her, respects her. She's a strong ass woman. She She's is. left him before. Yep. She's the one who bought the Lehigh house. She's That's the true. one who fucking got him out of a lot of problems. Yeah. Janelle's got game, my friend. Yeah, she do. And so, yeah, I think it's a big loss to him. And I think that probably threatens Robin a little bit. Oh, totally. She's an empath. She can feel that. Yeah. <laughs> She is an empath. (laughs) But do you also think that there's a little nugget of truth with Robin when she says the bullshit of like Cody's got a lot of weight on his shoulders and Cody using the analogy of Atlas and Mm -hmm. holding the world on his shoulders and he shrugged it off. Like, do you think there's a little nugget of truth of like he just got overwhelmed with the scale of his family and the responsibilities that it takes to be one man and have to maintain not only four marriages but 20,000 relationships of with all of these children like do you think I'm not I'm not justifying his behavior yeah. obviously of abandoning his family he created this huge ginormous family he should be responsible for maintaining it but do you think that part of that overwhelming feeling mm-hmm. of like all this all of this bullshit that it's he's had to maintain. It's the apparatus of your family, like the whole structure of yeah, the family. Yeah, do you think that that's why, he, part of the reason why he changed though? He was like, I just got lazy because he just wanted to maintain the one family. I think that's what makes him weak. Mm. I think that's what makes him soft because more money, more problems. Uh, With more money, they had more houses. They bought Coyote Pass. They're going to be a big house. They're going to be five different houses. There was way more infrastructure involved in maintaining and managing all of these relationships Absolutely. But a strong man would do it. Right. And a strong man would know how to do it. A strong man wouldn't bounce as soon as it got acute and mm. got hard. He would workshop the problem with all of his wives and even his kids. And you can't tell me that it's harder with his children. They're all old now. True. They have been raised. They're out of the house. You only have the tenders and Truly and Savannah. You are neglecting Savannah. You don't give a fuck about Truly. Let's just call a spade a spade. Oh, you yeah. do not give a fuck about Truly. No. Nope. You only care about your kids. So he's soft. He's weak, he's lazy, a coward. but he's also 100% up Robin's pussy. Oh, yeah. That's where he wants to be, Beatrice. Forever. He wants to be in that bed. He wants to be in that kitchen. He wants to be with her all the time. They are truly in love. And that's a beautiful thing. But tell the truth about it. Right. Just Don't be keep honest. stringing people along like Christine says. Like he likes to string people along. He's been stringing Mary along for years. Yeah. He's been string. He strung me along for quite some time. I finally said no. And he was trying to string Janelle along. This is what he's doing because he's a coward. Yeah. And this is one of the things that Christine said in terms of how he has changed because he's no longer courageous, which is another way of saying that bitch is a coward. Right. And he is a coward. Before moving on to the next segment, we have to talk about how Mary asks Robin, like, why isn't he doing more? Why isn't Cody doing more? I mean, he's so angry. He's so upset. Well, why isn't he doing something to fix this? And did you catch how Robin got really defensive? 
And she's yeah. like, well, what is he supposed to be doing? I, I don't understand your fucking question. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? What is he supposed to be doing? Yeah. What kind of question is that to ask to Mary of all fucking people who's been the most neglected? Uh, yeah. Let me count the ways I could call my kids. I could call my wives. I could equally support them financially. I could show up at their houses. I could continue to write poetry. I could provide for my family. I could be a friend to my family. Like I could spend my time equally amongst the houses. Like there's so many different ways. So many ways. What do you mean, Robin? What do you mean, Robin? Like when she's like, well, how is he supposed to act differently? What is he supposed to do? I'm just sick. I can't with you. And again, Janelle calls this out. This is an M.O., of robins yeah she likes to pretend that she's confused mm -hmm. or that she doesn't know or, or doesn't that she remember. doesn't remember like well what do you mean cody has any responsibility whatsoever in any of these marriages i don't get it ah. what's your question what do you mean it's christine's fault that the family broke up it's christine's fault for cody being angry and being a bitter person like robin believes yeah. cody's bullshit robin believes this lie that it's everybody else's fault but Cody. No, she this. doesn't. She no, believes I 100% don't believe that she believes that. I think she knows 100% that what they have done to the other sister wives is unfair, that they have treated really? children. Oh, uh, come on. Do you guys think Robin knows that what they've done is unfair and even cruel? Or do you think Robin doesn't understand that? I well, I think how she, this has impacted the rest of the family. I mean, she probably. Are you crazy? Well, are you sick? <laughs> Are you awake right now? <laughs> Are you for real? Be I'm so here. for real, Beatrice. Well, but that would mean that she would have to be really fucking smart and be this Machiavellian, Machiavellian puppet master this entire time to know what she has been doing and what Cody has been doing is wrong. And then if what Cody says is true at the end of this episode about how he doesn't want to abandon the rest of the wives because he doesn't want to lose Robin's respect... That would mean that Robin would hold value in Cody maintaining these marriages or putting on the air that he is maintaining these marriages. Money. Well, yeah. That's and true. I also don't believe him. Well, yeah. She does not need to be smart. I don't know how many times we have to discuss this, but let's do it again, <laughs> bitch. She does not have to be smart to be able to be a puppet master. All she really? has to do is to have instincts. Yes. Mm. All she has to do is to have instincts instinct dumb people know how to rob other people yeah, dumb people true. know how to commit crimes dumb people know how to abuse their children like dumb people do this shit all the time yeah i'm not saying robin is dumb but yes i she am is dumb. she's a dumb dumb yeah but she has the instinct and she knows she wants her man and a woman knows how to do what a woman mm. knows how to do just like a man knows how to do what a man knows how to do that's true that's fair is it okay you, you caved really easily <laughs> on that you're just playing devil's advocate i am yeah well let me ask you what why does the devil need an advocate <laughs> I got that off Reddit. And that Damn. is so fucking good. That's so true. Back at Sounds Bravo, <laughs> we're having a conversation about Cody's primary complaints against Christine and Janelle. And Christine's like, it was always that I wasn't a good sister wife. And you know what? I feel like I was a good sister wife. Maybe not the best. Yeah. There were things I could have done differently. But like, I wanted to be a good sister wife. But Robin really never gave me the opportunity. Case in point... She never let me take care of her children. And that is the essence of what sister wives do for one another. Yeah. They show up for the children. But Robin got a nanny. And Robin never really integrated into the fabric of the family structure. She always mm. held herself separate and apart from the rest of us. Yep. And in doing so, I could never really be a full and complete sister wife to her. And, and I was yet. like, preach, girl. <laughs> preach. So Tell good. me more. So good. And Janelle's just kind of like smiling because she knows this is mm -hmm. true. And she even says to Christine, like, this is kind of how it's evolved in the family is that like everybody's been kind of part of the sidelines. I think this is the part where Christine talks about the parties and how every time she planned yes. a party, yes. Cody arrived as a guest. Yes. But then Cody was right there planning all of the parties for him and Robin's house and everything like that. So he was acting like a husband for her. Mm -hmm. And so it's in all of those moments compounded over time, over 10, 12 years that have shown to all of these wives that, yeah, they're just side characters in this galaxy quest. It's just him and Robin the whole entire time. Yes. And this is where Janelle brings up the fact that you couldn't criticize Robin yeah. to criticize Robin and her impact in the other marriages was tantamount to abuse yeah according to Cody because that was as crazy. soon as anybody brought it up 
And hello, it's legitimate to bring it up. Yeah. Because you're spending 25 nights out of 30 over there at Robin's house and that impacts our marriage and our children. So I'm going to bring that shit up. Hello. But anytime you brought that up, he immediately shut it down. Robin can do no wrong. She's just a sweet girl. You're all just picking on her. She came into this family cap in hand and with her bills. Do they go on the counter? Do the bills go on the counter? My Victoria's <laughs> Secret bills do. But she's a sweet woman and I will not hear any criticism of her. If you do, then you're a big bad sister wife. Now, do you think that that was fueled by Cody? And his love and lust for and Robin's razor blade. And by her always playing the victim and feeling okay. so hurt and yeah. always being so sensitive and always going out of her way to other herself and her children, which reminds mm -hmm. me of Gwendolyn Brown on her Patreon because she told the story of like, she must have been, I don't know, nine or 10 years old, a really young girl. She's riding along with Robin and the kids in Robin's minivan and Robin's pregnant with King Solomon. <laughs> And so Gwendolyn says something like, I'm so excited. I'll ha we'll have like a, a brother in common, a full blood brother. Although I'm sure she said it as a child would. And with yeah. the innocence of a child, did she say it? Of course. And Robin fucking stops the minivan, starts crying. Aurora and Dayton and Brianna, they are your sisters and brother. Oh my God. We are actually your family too. And turned Ugh. it into this big fucking production and spectacle about how Gwendolyn didn't accept them as real family like uh, Gwendolyn's nine yeah Gwendolyn's nine. she's just a kid she goes to great pains to do this and she if she's doing it to a nine-year-old Gwendolyn she's doing it to Christine mm. she's doing it to Mary she's doing it to Cody when yeah. Cody comes home and talks about the shit that's going on in these homes which he does right so of course Cody being in love with her and wants the best for her yes. of course he believes that so that okay that makes sense well we just heard about it because Janelle said I think in last episode that she had a private conversation with Robin about how maybe she doesn't want to buy the McMansion because it's oh, a lot yeah. of money we would use for Coyote Pass but it was a normal conversation between two sister wives right she takes that to Cody and somehow something's lost in translation mm -hmm. and Cody brings it up a year and a half later and paints it as if Janelle attacked Robin mm. I guarantee you Robin conveyed it as such Cody didn't make that shit up oh yeah honey get with it and Robin even reveals that she does that when she's talking to Mary because Mary's like are you going to be there when I tell Cody that I'm moving because I'm going to need you to be there and Robin's like yeah I'll translate for you because you know people call me what is what is she's like people I tease speak, me i, I speak, speak cody. cody i speak i'm the cody whisperer mm, you just revealed your hand there robin brown mm -hmm. we know what you're doing so in the conversation at salsa bravo when they're talking about how we can't criticize robin we segue into that the fact that robin paints herself as a victim and again yeah. her mo is to act like she doesn't know what's happening i'm so confused mm. and mystified but that her need to be a victim runs so deep that Janelle doesn't think it is overcomable. Yeah, like, I don't think big. this bitch is ever going to change. I think because she's always going to need to see herself as somebody Cody has to take care of, mm -hmm. which Janelle calls the damsel in distress syndrome or whatever, yeah. because she has to do that. I'm never going to be, ha I'm never going to have a normal relationship with Cody Brown and something has got to change. Whatever happens to me, Janelle says, whether I marry again you know, into I a know polygamist that. marriage or like if so if God gives me a guy and says, this is the one, Ugh. irrespective, it has got to be different than what I got going on right now with Cody Brown. Yes, honey. Yes. At, at the very least. At the very least, you deserve different. Now, what is Robin going to do when all of these wives are gone and she has nothing to fill her time with Cody? Like, She's been manipulating Cody this whole entire time and like acting like this damsel in distress. What are you going to do now when all of the wives are gone? Continue because with she used, what? I think with her kids, oh. with her children who Cody has admitted he plans to have them in the house for at least 15 years <sighs> while Saul at the time is probably nine years old. So like well into his 20s, Jesus. even though he wanted to kick out Gabe and Garrison as soon as they turned 18. Yeah. So he's intending for those children to stick around. I think... Robin may be deeply invested in keeping the children as baby-like as possible. Ooh. This is a theory on Reddit. Ugh. As baby-like as possible because Cody really is enamored with the little ones. Mm. He's always picking up the little ones. And as soon as you get old, especially if you're a boy, yep. he's discarding you. And so Robin is trying to make it because 
on the couch here with Saul and Ari talking about the mini bikes that they'll right. never be able to ride. I think Saul is nine or ten. Oh yeah, he's old enough that he could ride one of those mini he bikes. He looks like he's six. Yeah, he looks really, really young. And same with Ari with her fucking binky a couple episodes. He's ago. like one year younger than Truly. Gee, put that dude. into perspective. So I'm wondering if she's trying to keep them in the baby years as long as possible, so Cody Ugh. stays interested in them, therefore interested in her. That's now, a once fucked up dynamic. All of the kids kids are out of the house then it's just cody and robin girl i don't know what the fuck she's gonna leave him she's gotta right like because there's not gonna be anything for her to do oh my I god have, you're gonna be stuck with cody curling his hair no idea we kind of end the episode and and the the scene with mary saying something that i was like are you fucking kidding me right now? Which is the following. She's like, it's me and Robin that are ones, the ones that really care about this relationship. We are the ones that are willing to have difficult conversations, which you need to do if you want to heal relationships. And I'm thinking to myself, Mary, aren't you the woman who anytime things got a little dicey or a little too close to you, you're like, walls up, walls up. Yeah. I'm feeling unsafe. <laughs> she totally is. I that have to person. remove myself from the situation because I'm feeling unsafe. Ugh. All of a sudden, you're able to have difficult conversations. Show me. Show me when. Well, Show me how. I've never seen it. I'm like, what difficult conversations are you talking about? Because a difficult conversation would be you confronting Robin on her shitty friendship to you and how she's stringing you along, along with Cody. Like, that's the difficult conversation right. you need to be having with her. Yep. Not this stupid bullshit about you right. being afraid to tell her that you're moving. Yeah, I know. I was just like, I'm disappointed in you. But at the yeah. same time, you ended it by saying, I need to go where people want me. Like, yeah. I want to be where people people want me. I don't want to be where I'm unwelcome. I felt I have that. a full life. I have a good life. I've got a lot of stuff on my plate. And so I just want to focus on being in the vibe of that. Yeah. And Robin, I guess, understands. She's hurt, but she understands. She should see the writing on the wall. What? That Mary's, Mary's leaving? Mary's leaving. Oh, yeah. I she think she should sees see that. the writing on the wall. Yeah. I think she sees that. I don't think she's actually feeling for mary in this moment though i think she's crying because she's of herself yeah because she's gonna be alone with cody <laughs> and because she potentially is going to lose another income stream because she knows janelle is going out the door she mm -hmm. knows it's also dishonoring and it's an embarrassment and that they failed and yep. robin you failed and cody you especially failed oh especially because robin can be as toxic and as vile as possible yeah but you're the one that stands at the door the centurion at the gate to protect your family. Yep. You let this woman inside. You let her change your mind. Mm -hmm. You let her change how you treat your children. And she can be as fucked up as possible. But that one, my guy, that's on you. Totally. That's on you. Preach. Now we get to the preview for next week. And of course, we will be back to talk about that. Yeah. We see Christine continuing to encourage Janelle to move to Utah. Oh, my God. She just wants it so bad, Oh, my God. Dude. Sister wives forever. Yes. Sister wives lives. Yes. We see Mary telling Cody that she's leaving, but that she's still in the family and she's still in this relationship. And then Cody's like... I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't even phase me at has all. has no effect on me no whatsoever. I wonder what he's going to say in the moment because I think I heard or read somewhere that the description of that episode says that it goes way worse than Mary expected <gasps> it to go. So I think we're going to get into some horse shit. Ooh, we love. We, love the fuck it. we also see Cody saying that he's afraid to abandon the OG three wives because Robin will lose respect for him. That's huge. Meaning he's a weak fucking man who can't yep. stand up to his wife. Yep. And last but not least, Janelle and Cody go on a date. Why? And he's so excited. He's got butterflies. They're fluttering in his six pack ab abdomen and his pencil and his pencil is getting a little tingly <laughs> down there he's getting really excited for this date and he's kind of jonesing for a little kiss maybe she'll maybe she'll favor him with a kiss and janelle's just Ugh. riding in the car like dude it's been over i'm done with you hasta la vista then why is she going on the date She's probably wanting to co-parent consciously or uncouple consciously. Uh, she's, she knows she's, this guy's going to be in her life for the rest of her life. I Might guess. as well just have a conversation. We have yet to see. Maybe she's giving it one final shot. The good old college try. The good old college but try. But we at least have the comfort and the solace of knowing that woman leaves him. Uh, Whatever he tries, 
ain't gonna work. Janelle's gone. Deuces. Peace out. I just want to see her with a big strapping cowboy, dude. Big old big dick, strong, big old nice You say this muscles. every episode. I'm just, I'm We've putting received it out into it. the universe. We've received your manifestation. I keep putting it out there. Well, give it some time. Ugh. Janelle has to get, Janelle has I'm to. I'm not patient. Janelle has to be okay with that. She's still like. Mary is trying to remove her identity from the cult and from yeah. the family. Janelle is doing the same thing. She's still deep in the cult. So yeah. it's going to take her some time. But yeah, I co-signed that manifestation, honey. <laughs> I want happiness wanted. for her. I don't think she's ever known what it's like oh, no. to be with like one of those kind of men. Because oh, no. she thought Cody was attractive. I know. She loved his man bun. I know. She thought he was the bee's knees. And I'm like, you have yet to sample the glorious tastings of men out in the world all the ice cream flavors all the ice cream flavors <laughs> as it were like you have yet to sample what like a real man is like oh yeah i know i just want that for her so bad and, and mary, mary or with a woman that's fine i mean yes of a course. biker person you always say that with mary I, so do you think that that's something that's possible yes i just oh i don't know it's why it's really inappropriate of you as a gay person what to speculate on somebody's gayness i'm allowed to because of my authority as the l and the you lgbt have a, you have an authority <laughs> yes. as a lil it's my gay you're always trying to invite additional lesbians into the fold listen my gaydar has never been wrong no and you think it's you've got some gaydar with wrong. mary yes my god does anybody out there have gaydar for mary i would love to see it uh, you know i love a gay fantasy yes i love a gay especially a lesbian fan we need more lesbians yes out here a late One of them dykes on bikes, oh, girl. Yeah. any kind of dyke will do yes any kind of dyke will yes. do yes we'll speak it into existence for you mary put it on the vision board you're welcome <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. This was a great episode. Yeah, a lot Had of a great conversations. Time. You look particularly cute tonight and skinny, which I resent. Thank you. Very much. I'm trying. But do we have anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Well, if you love our podcast, I hope that you give us a glowing five star review ah. just profess your love to ah. us and support us on all your favorite podcast platforms don't forget we will be back later this week to talk welcome to plathville we do have some hot goss <laughs> and <laughs> yeah we do and something special that we want to share with you so make sure to pay attention to that and we'll also be diving back into the dirty dirty well <laughs> of 90 day fiance the last resort <laughs> if you guys aren't following us for that i'm just telling you this is a serious conversation we're happening for Sister Wives. Way serious. Yeah. But when we get to 90 Day Fiance, I mean, you can't be serious. It's just a trash pile. It's so crazy. And those conversations are funny. They are funny because what else are we going to do? I mean. Except talk shit. So if you, <laughs> haven't, if you haven't joined us for those convos, make sure that you do. Yeah. And until then, we love you and peace Bye. out.